Okay, so in this video, I actually just wanted to discuss one thing. A recently released video of an incredible star system that's just basically breathtaking. The star system that you see in this image, known as R. Aquarii, one of the closest known symbiotic binaries that was originally discovered by Edwin Hubble back in 1939. And well, to start, let's I guess just watch the video first, and then I'll try to explain to you what's going on and why this is kind of cool. And so just a few days ago, from when I'm making this video, the team behind the Hubble telescope released this, an actual time lapse showing us how the star system changed in approximately 9 years, between 2014 and 2023. And well, as you can see, the differences here are somewhat dramatic. And the only reason we even have these images is because the Hubble Space Telescope has been observing the system very closely for nearly 30 years, since 1990. And that's because, just a few years prior to this, scientists discovered that inside the star system here, we have a pair of really intriguing jets. A pair of star jets blasting a lot of material in opposite directions, essentially producing the nebula we see. And so as a result, the star, our Aquarii, also have a different name. It's also referred to as Cedarblatt 211. And that's actually the name of the nebula. The nebula that resembles something like this. This is essentially if you have a telescope. But what exactly is happening here? How is this nebula formed? And I guess why does it look so unusual? To be more exact, why does it look like someone is looking at you? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is technically what's known as a symbiotic binary. A type of a binary system that usually contains a white dwarf and a really large expanded red giant. Or in essence, this used to be two stars very similar to our sun, but one of them eventually became a white dwarf, and the other one started to expand on the way to becoming a white dwarf, before its partner started to basically borrow just a little bit of mass. And so in these symbiotic binaries, which are actually not that common to be honest, we always have two interacting components, one slightly older than the other. And in this case, it's a red giant 400 times larger than the sun, and the white dwarf just a little bit more massive than what the sun is going to be when one day it becomes a white dwarf too. And here when the white dwarf gets really close to the star, it dramatically increases the accretion process, accumulates a lot of matter, and starts to actually produce very intriguing binary jets. The jets that resemble something like this. And it's actually these jets that start to throw away a lot of mass from the partner star, then resulting in the emissions we see in this video. And so you can kind of see that there are some jet emissions there, and it's the emissions from the white dwarf. But the thing is, because of the way these stars orbit, this really only happens for some time during the 44 year long orbit. And so with each close passage, every 44 years, this is when the accretion increases dramatically and can even result in a massive explosion known as a nova. But these nova don't seem to be too common. As a matter of fact, no actual nova has been seen from the system, except for maybe one time. There might have been a nova back in 930 AD, witnessed by the Japanese astronomers, because they did see something in this region. And based on the observations from this nebula, something did actually happen approximately 1100 years ago. Basically, there is some kind of a major emission that must have happened over a thousand years ago that created a large chunk of this nebula. And that implies that this is not a stable system and seems to go through some major emissions. As a matter of fact, by looking at the central region here, it becomes obvious that something must have happened 190 years ago as well. There are signs of a major ejection following along the jet. But this beautiful time lapse created by the European Space Agency and the team from the Hubble Space Telescope shows us how everything here changes in just 9 years. So basically these are extremely chaotic systems. Moreover, this is a variable system where the giant star, the red giant, also goes through some dramatic changes when it comes to brightness. It can actually change its brightness by up to 750 times in a single year. And when it peaks, it can be as bright as 5000 solar luminosities. Which actually makes it even visible to the naked eye. But then within just a few months, it dims again and becomes only visible with binoculars. And that's because this is what's known as the Mira variable. So basically here we have a variable star that changes its brightness and even the temperature on the surface, and we have a white dwarf that orbits in a somewhat elliptical orbit, sometimes approaching it super close. And so on some occasions, this white dwarf can approach the star right at the peak of its brightness, 
which is when it usually absorbs the most mass and potentially results in some kind of a major explosion. But it looks like these explosions are kind of rare. What's not rare though are the jets. These jets seem to happen pretty much every single time. And here, based on the observations, we observe that the ejected material seems to be twisted into filaments and also spread out because of the star's magnetic field. And so this type of a star is one of the prime candidates when it comes to studying jets. Because here we observe jets in action and they seem to change every few years. As a matter of fact, if you compare this image to the image of the nearby Centaurus A galaxy, you'll notice that there seems to be a lot of similarity in terms of the shape of the jets. Except here we're looking at something that's tens of thousands of light years in length. This, on the other hand, is much, much shorter. But the underlying mechanism of the formation of these jets seems to be kind of similar. And so by studying these symbiotic binaries, and specifically R. aquarii, researchers are hoping to learn to understand these jets a little bit better, because the formation of these jets seems to be a kind of a universal mechanism. It obviously applies to white dwarfs, it also applies to neutron stars and black holes, and of course, massive galaxies. Not to mention that it also applies to young stars. As a matter of fact, baby stars also produce these, and their production usually results in a certain type of a star system with certain types of planets. And so trying to understand how these jets and the magnetic fields around these stars influences the formation of planets and develops various stars is really the main question researchers are kind of trying to answer. But I guess what's intriguing is that a lot of these symbiotic stars usually contain variable stars inside and also usually produce these jets. But exactly why this is so is not clear. As a matter of fact, it's not clear why these jets are even produced. And so here this particular system is important for a lot of different studies. For example, understanding ionized nebula and their formation, trying to understand the influence from the stellar wind, and of course trying to understand how the accretion around the white dwarf results in the production of the jet and the production of this beautiful nebula. But exactly why this particular shape is produced here, and why there are so many spirals, and so many unusual shapes that make this resemble an eyeball, is of course not something we can answer just yet. It is though an extremely gorgeous formation, and something I'm sure we'll be learning more about in some of the future observations and some of the future studies. But before we finish this video, I also wanted to make one important distinction. These symbiotic binaries are somewhat similar but not exactly the same as objects known as planetary nebula. Here's actually an example of a planetary nebula that also produces a really beautiful formation, and that's because in this case this is a binary system as well. Here we have two stars, with one being a red giant, that's slowly losing its mass and is slowly transitioning into a white dwarf. And in many of these cases, they'll also produce beautiful nebula, but these nebula are produced through a different mechanism. Here, there is no partner still in the mass, no accretion disk, and no jet. And so not only are the shapes going to be different, but even the elements that seem to be released. As a matter of fact, when looking at these binaries that do not have a white dwarf and are not symbiotic binaries, in at least one study you can find any description, there was a major difference in oxygen and nitrogen lines, suggested that the nebula contained different elements, and these symbiotic stars produced ionized materials as opposed to molecules. And that's probably because this is produced by a powerful jet as opposed to a planetary nebula where the material is released by the powerful stellar winds. And so even though they do resemble each other and have somewhat similar origins, these are actually entirely different formations. And compared to planetary nebula, symbiotic binaries are kind of rare. But because this is such an exciting concept, we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or once there are some additional gorgeous videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on Planetary Nebula in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.